spirit unshakable through God. God's creation of man and woman was primarily for fellowship with him. How wonderful it is that God uses marriage as a symbol to foreshadow the marriage of the Lamb, Jesus our bridegroom, and we his bride. God has manifested his sovereignty over the most intimate relationship on earth, which is between husband and wife. God created Adam and Eve at two separate instances. Genesis 2-7 records, The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. 21. The Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. This was the first surgery with a spiritual purpose, one of Adam's ribs to make woman. It was Eve as wife who was created by God for a companion to Adam. When God brought the woman to man, it was marriage. It was a divine covenant and commitment as Adam affirmed Eve as woman and as his own, bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. Adam became a living soul in the presence of God and Eve witnessed that presence of God before she was brought by God to Adam. They individually encountered and experienced God first. A man and woman must cleave to God as a first love and then love each other as husband and wife in union on earth. God Almighty intended that Adam and Eve are made complete with the heavenly personage, the Abba Father our God, and the earthly companion as husband and wife. It is pertinent that God is reverenced as a supreme to ensure this covenant is established as a bond of honor and glory to God. The supremacy of marriage is shared right from Genesis to Revelation. God desired to make a helper who would be to man a source of support and walk beside him in all the parts of life in unity. God's plan was distinct. It was a wife to the man, one who would join and walk besides him in all the parts of life in unity and be his help and together be blessed and fruitful. Marriage is the greatest intimacy on earth that is preeminent in the Father's eyes and has a supremacy over all other human bonds and it is second in position in the hierarchy of a husband and wife. It has its essence of holiness and purity as it's from the Maker. In reverence to God through this earthly intimacy, the establishment of marriage illuminates our lives to the reality of eternity as we wait eagerly for our heavenly call when our bridegroom takes us as his bride. God has set mandates over the marriage covenant. In Genesis 2.24, a man must leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Leave doesn't imply to forsake break relationships or forget the father and mother but it is to ensure to the fullest that there's God's intervention alone in a marriage and deeper oneness and intimacy of understanding each other. The word cleave is symbolic for the reason how God chose the man's rib to make woman which shares the essence of cleaving to each other and not giving up. The man becomes one flesh with his wife and unites into being one in body, spirit and mind. This oneness ensures that as husband and wife, they are connected and subjected to the spirit of God. Marriages have been contaminated and lack the qualities God intended. They have formed a breach, detached and broken down due to the absence of God 
and the inefficiency of partnering according to godly principles. Marriages across the globe have failed and still others on the verge of destruction merely due to lack of love and submission. It needs God's perspective in order to function. What is love that we need to portray? Well, it is the agape love. What is the kind of submission expected? It is in accordance to the will of God. Let us revive our covenant before God that we may persevere in our marriages, love and forgive our spouses, and keep the enemy defeated. Our lives must bear the fruit of the Spirit and prove all that the Father accepts, which manifests in goodness, righteousness, and truth. Ephesians 5.22 Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. The wife as a helper is expected to be submissive to her husband in all that pleases God. She is deployed to stand and support her husband in the things of God in accordance to God's will. Submission doesn't mean a wife is inferior, loses her identity or allows violation against God's purposes. It's not being weak, vulnerable, controlled, or ruled under pressure in patriarchal and male chauvinism. Well, this is the way the system of the world is functioned. But according to the norms of the kingdom of God, it is a upright living by the fruit of the Spirit and reflecting the nature of God in all things. Her submission is to live in love and honor for her husband, in line with God's ordinances, to encourage him to propel to where he is assigned by God and support, defend him against the wiles of the enemies of God are established and the home portrays the kingdom of God. The mandate to husbands, Ephesians 5.25 Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. A husband needs to love his wife as himself without seeking his own way, but God's way, God's ordinances. 1 Corinthians 11.3 But I want you to understand that the head of every man is Christ. The head of a wife is her husband and the head of Christ is God. When the head of man is Christ, a husband is impelled to live out the attributes of God in all things. Love, forgiveness, sobriety, self-control, submitting to God's expectations and ordinances. Ephesians 5.26 That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. This is a greater responsibility, where a husband is called to sanctify, cleanse and wash his wife through the word of God. He ensures, he preserves his wife, without a spot or wrinkle, without words that are carnal, but that which surpasses the carnal in light to God's word. When wives are able to submit in God and husbands are able to love as Christ, it's impossible to see marriages fail. A marriage needs oneness that comes through love and submission, which is not just from a single spouse or a demanding spouse, but as husband and wife willing to uplift and edify each other towards a higher purpose of God. God wants us to know his heart and desire to fulfill his purposes in our marriage. It is his divine will to preserve the savor in our marriages, a spirit-led leaving leaving and becoming one flesh accelerate marriage in intimacy 
oneness and depth of willingness to satisfy one another every marriage that has god in it transcends in unity and oneness and spirit the cord that is bound as threefold god husband and wife cannot be broken by the wiles of the devil no matter what storms or floods arise against it a marriage is preserved by god as its foundation without him it is in vain as psalm 127 one says except the lord build a house they labor in vain that build it except the lord keep the city the watchman waketh but in vain we need to withstand the storms persevere in the hardest of times we may have failed fallen and messed up in our marriages but through god it can be built and rebuilt you might be in a phase where all hope is lost and all you can see is destruction but take the step to fortify and secure your home while god desires every house is built on him as a strong foundation the enemy is reckless and outrageous in his exploits to make you weak to an extent where you will easily give up burst out or collapse in your pursuit to preserve your home build your home in him overcome the enemy through the blood of jesus and as a testimony for the glory of god in your marriages stay blessed in your marriage through god amen